if I, if I ever took one piece of advice from my mum that I really took to heart, she always said to me, just do your best. Just try, right? And then even if you don't achieve your dreams, at least at the end of your life, you can say, I tried. And I've always taken that to heart. I've always turned up, done the work. But it only occurred to me very recently, who am I imagining saying that to at the end of my life? I tried. I, I try. <laughs> Who, who's on the other end of that? The Grim Reaper? St. Peter? A nursing home care worker who doesn't know my name? I tried. <laughs> Good, well, you can try your soup. Mm, mm. <laughs> or am I saying it to the Distractatron, which is an android I've invented, which is a, it's a combat dementia. It's a cross between chat roulette and bop it. <laughs> And it heralds the end of Western civilization. <laughs> give, give me a cheer if you're ambitious. <laughs> Not all of you, was it? <laughs> okay, easier question. Give me a cheer if you are pretending to be ambitious. <laughs> ah, yes, you. Very good. Uh, tell me, what do you do for a living? I'm a lecturer. You're a lecturer? Christ, we're fucked. That's it. <laughs> you're a lecturer. Uh, in what subject? Nelson. In what? Nurse, nurses. <laughs> well, this has taken a dark turn. Um, <laughs> here's my question. Are you, um, are you pretending to be ambitious to yourself or to the people around you? To them. To them. Okay, and what is the highest thing that you could achieve in your, in your industry if you were as ambitious as you're claiming to be to the people around you? Uh, like, PhD. PhD. Like, same shit, more money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. In a moment or two, I'm going to refer to you as a loser, but it's nothing personal. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Here's, the, here's my relationship with ambition, right? In stand-up comedy, that's what this is. In, in stand-up comedy, it is absolutely full of incredibly ambitious people. And when I started, about 15, 16 years ago, I started at the same time as a group of incredibly driven, ambitious, hard-working, talented young comics, okay? Now, they are all famous millionaires. And good luck to them, right? There's no luck, in, well, no luck involved. They, they, they were brilliant. They worked for it, played for, and got. And whilst I didn't see them so much anymore, we appeared on the same bills less and less often. I would see less of them. Uh, and yeah, maybe I was a little bit intimidated by their success. I ended up falling in with a newer generation of comics, a different crowd, younger guys and girls, uh, you know, kind of oddball, political, pretty boy acts, you know, people who'd never amount to anything. Now, they're all famous millionaires. Here's, here's my question. Is it me? Is, is there something about my presence that makes other people think, bloody hell, I'd better knuckle down? And, and if there is, can that quality be monetized, perhaps from home? <laughs> because I love the work, I love the work, I love this, I love you, I love the job. I just can't cope with the envy, the stress, the yearning, the striving, the desperation. Right? I love the work, I'd always do the work, but I'm 44, halfway through my life, couldn't I just uncouple, uncouple the, the, the striving and the envy and all of that shit? I could jettison that, slip the clutch and just coast like this loser. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm just in the middle of the road kneeling in the middle of the road, cradling the fox of my ambition. Recently mown down by the truck of time, effort and parenthood. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I was driving. <laughs> and I steered directly towards this poor little fox. Smashed him down, I jumped out, I've scooped him up in my arms, kneeling in the road, and I'm looking down at him and his little his old body's all smashed up, spit and dribble coming out of his mouth, his eyes all wonky like that. <laughs> looking up at me. You promised. Shh. I said a lot of things. <laughs> and I'm trying to decide right now in real time, do I expend enormous personal effort on coaxing him back to life or just brick him? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
I'm fine. I know it's better. I know it's better to travel hopefully than to arrive. I know that. I've been to insert rival town here. I know it's the travelling hopefully, but does the travelling hopefully have to go on forever? Does the striving have to go on forever? I've got a squirrel in my loft. <laughs> my wife's loft. I... There's a squirrel in there, 20 past six every morning. I hear it scuttling up this little slopey bit of the loft that you can't get into. And then it scuttles up and then it goes across this sort of flat bit that you can get into. You can open this little hatch about six inches and you can just peep in and you can see it's all full of squirrel shit. He's all nibbled through the wires and the lights, lighting and wires and everything. And every morning, 20 past six, I hear him. The time it takes it to achieve that bit of the journey is gradually decreasing. He's getting better. <laughs> Either that or the squirrel community are gradually sending their best people. <laughs> Tough to eat, walk it off. Nutkin, you're up. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. I can't get into the bit of the loft to seal it up and you can't get to the outside of that bit of the building. You physically can't get there to prevent the squirrel getting access, right? So all I can do, two choices, all I can do is either smash a hole in my ceiling and paint it and plaster it, get in there, seal it out, repaint, replaster, all the rest of that, or absolutely nothing. Guess which one I'm doing? <laughs> I'm lying there at 20 past six every morning listening to a rodent embody a metaphor about self-improvement while all the lights in my house go out one by one. 